All right. Good morning, New Covenant family and Facebook family. Thank you all for tuning in to our live stream service on this morning. Uh, this, what is this, December the 20th, 2020. This year is almost over. Oh my God, it's been some kind of year. And uh, there have been some challenges this year, but we thank God that the year is winding down, coming to a close. And our hope and prayer is that for 2021, we'll see much better things, many brighter things, a uh, brighter future. And, uh, but, you know, 2020 is almost over. This Friday will be Christmas Day. I hope you all are prepared for Christmas. I hope you've done your Christmas shopping. Uh, but mainly, I pray that you all don't forget the reason for the season. And the greatest gift of all is the gift that God gave to the world. In the person of his son, Jesus Christ, uh -huh. Emmanuel, God with us. God became a man so that he might die for the sins of the whole world to redeem mankind back to God. That's what Christmas season is all about, is the fact that Jesus Christ was born an infant child uh, in the little town of Bethlehem. He was wrapped in swaddling clothes and watch this. He was laid in a manger. He wasn't born in a manger. He was wrapped in swaddling cloth and laid in a manger. Glory to God. Because there was no room for Mary and Joseph in the end. And uh, this infant child grew up into a grown man at the age of 30. He walked 72 miles to get baptized in the muddy waters of the Jordan River. He spent 33 and a half years on planet Earth. Three and a half of those years, he preached the gospel of the kingdom. And the last year of his life, uh, he died on the cross to redeem mankind. On the third day, God raised him from the dead, and he has seated him at his own right hand. What a wonderful blessing that is. That's what this season is all about. The fact that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen? So thank God for Jesus Christ. And had it not been for the Lord who is on our side, had it not been for Jesus, we wouldn't be here. Everything that we have done all these years, all our life would be a waste of time. And now, my beautiful wife. <laughs> and late wife. <laughs> I mean, late, not late wife. Yeah. Okay. Late wife. Yeah. All right. Play on words that. All right. Yeah. Thank you for joining me this morning. Sorry Pastor Cheryl for being Hines. Late, you guys. No problem. Time got away from me. No problem. I'm, I'm glad that I have a wife, whether you're late or not. People say, how can you be late working from home? Well, it's, I'm living proof you can. Well, we're going to leave that alone. All right. I'm going to read Psalms number 91. And uh, Pastor Cheryl will come back to us and share with us. Uh, what the Lord has given her, and then we're going to get into the word on this morning. We've got a good, another good word for us on today. And uh, let me say this before I read Psalms number 91. At 12 o'clock, from 12 until 1, uh, Pastor Cheryl and I will be at the church on today to uh, receive the tithe and the offering. So you all can stop by from 12 uh, to 1 on today and drop off your tithe and offering. All right? But the DeAndre has music. Uh, we're going to be putting it on Facebook in a little bit. It's on YouTube. We'll bring it over to Facebook so that I won't have to sing. I thought about singing a Christmas song while I was waiting on Pastor Cheryl. I was thinking about chestnuts roasting on a long... No, it wasn't. Uh, Psalms number 91. <laughs> he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Um, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. 
Uh, for a thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. And only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. They, in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample on the foot, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearers and the doers of his holy word. Amen. All right, Pastor Cheryl. Amen. What do you want to share with us on today? Well, you know, I was, first of all, good morning to everybody. And Amen. It's just a beautiful day, isn't it? Absolutely. The is Considering the way it was on yesterday. Yes, every. It seemed like for the past few Saturdays, we've been rainy mm -hmm. and cold. Ooh, we had a thick wind yesterday. Oh, my Ooh, goodness. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Just yeah. up our backyard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my God, man. Blue furniture in, our, in the pool. It was just a mess. Yeah, yeah. God can come in. Yes, my kid. yes he can. Yes, he can. Ooh, can you imagine the power that it took the 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 Red Sea to part? Wow. The wow. Bible say that God blew an east wind. Yes, just from the blast of his nostrils. Yes, mm. yes. Mm. God is powerful. Yes, he is. Um, but this week I was in Deuteronomy, and um, and it's so interesting because uh, Moses is he's talking to that second generation bishop. Mm hmm. And I know that you and I talked about this the other day. Yes. Tell me what Deuteronomy means. Deuteronomy is a, a reintroduction of the law, a yeah, redoing yeah. of the law. He gave the law to the first generation, his their parents' generation. Mm -hmm. And now their parents have died off. That generation has died off, most of them. Yeah. Now he's and talking he's to the, talking yeah. to the next generation. Yeah, he's talking to the next generation. Because Moses is getting ready to die. Yes. He will not go in to the promised land with with them. Right. <clears throat> and so, but he has to instruct them. Yes. And so they had no excuse. None. As to why God, as to why they couldn't do right. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So listen, I was reading and God was giving them uh through Moses' instructions, what they could and could not eat. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh my God, this is fascinating because you all know this coronavirus, mm -hmm. they say that it is, uh, it was started by people in mm -hmm. China mm -hmm. eating bats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in Deuteronomy 13, I'm sorry, in Deuteronomy 14, mm -hmm. uh, verse number 18 mm -hmm. it says that this is what you they could not eat mm -hmm. and it was the bat mm -mm -mm -mm. wow wow god bat. Pro prohibited yeah his people from eating that yeah we and, and, and of course god is, is is a god of purpose yes there's always a reason why, why? god uh -huh. does what he does and says what he says. And this could be the very purpose for which God forbade his people from eating bats. Mm -hmm. Because God Ooh, being... Oh, yeah, God. And, when you... <laughs> when they sh were showing those bats in the marketplace mm -hmm. of China, mm -hmm. and you could see the, mm. the saliva coming out of their mm -hmm. mouths, mm -hmm. You know that wasn't clean. Yeah, yeah that's hard. God called this this stuff unclean. Absolutely. So now we know why. Yeah. Because the coronavirus was started Absolutely. from a bat. Yeah. We. And so God 
Um, he prevented. He yeah. don't. He he prohibited them. Yeah. Yeah. Don't eat no bats. Yeah. And it was a whole lot of other stuff he told them not to eat. Yeah. You couldn't eat an owl. You couldn't eat ravens. You couldn't eat ostrich. Mm -hmm. and, and the seagull, the mm -hmm. hawk. Mm -hmm. uh, he couldn't eat an eagle either. Yeah. yeah. My God. God's ultimate bird. Yeah. That's something God say for himself. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And so it was, I, I thought that was fascinating. So I just wanted to share Absolutely it fascinating. with yeah. you all this morning. It's so much. When you that you don't know in the word because you have to read it and yeah. you have to study God's word for us to know that it's in that. A lot of times people say, Oh, I didn't know that was in the Bible. Yeah, yeah, because if you read the Bible, you will find out what's in the Bible and God's plan, yeah. and then and then you will find out why God said. Well, can I say this, Pastor? Oh, sure, See, the, the thing about God, and this is the thing that we have to remember. <laughs> Is that God is eternal. Mm -hmm. He's older than we are. He's been around forever. Mm -hmm. Number two, God is omnisapient, meaning that he's uh, infinitely wise. Mm -hmm. He's much wiser than we are. Yes. Uh, number three, God is omniscient, meaning that he is perfected in knowledge. He knows more than we do. We, we just got to surrender and say, yeah. all right, you, say, God, you, know yeah, you, you, you know better. You know better. You know better. Than we do. Absolutely. So we need to submit ourselves mm -hmm. to him. Yes, yes. And let him tell us what we need to do and what we don't need to do. Mm -hmm. And what it is that we should and shouldn't eat. And, you know, when God, I believe, shares with us those things, the best thing that we can do is just say, okay, God, just you know. Submit. Just yeah, submit. Just submit. Just go ahead and submit. And, and not just foods, but. You know, uh, lifestyle, behavior, and all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, God knows what's best. You know, he, he's God. Yes, he does. And so, therefore... And compared to him, we don't know nothing. We don't, don't know, know anything. No, I don't care who has the highest IQ ever, ever. in the world. The history it, it, exactly. The world. In the history of the world, we're still, still not even a drop in the bucket. In comparison to the omniscience of God. of God, what God knows, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So that was very fascinating. Yeah. yeah. And another thing, Bishop, I read is that he told Israel because God knows the probability. Yeah. He didn't want Israel to have a king. He wanted to be their king, but he knew they was gonna want a king. Absolutely. And so he told them, he said, "If you take a king for yourself," mm -hmm. he said, "This is he." He gave. Three things that kings were not supposed to do. Yeah. They weren't supposed to build up horses and chariots mm -hmm. and riches for yep. themselves. Yep. He said, I don't want you to do that. Yep. Because God has God has a plan to bless yep. his leader. Absolutely. He, he did. He, Absolutely. he had a plan to bless him. Yep. And so he said, I don't want you to do that. Yep. And then he said, secondly, I don't want you to take a whole lot of wives. Mm -hmm. They were prohibited. Right. From taking a hold. But the third thing, and yes. this is what was so fascinating to me. Yeah. Each king was to be given a copy, copy of, of the, the law. law. Copy of the law. And each king was to write out. Yes. Of that he was to write out the law. Yes. For himself. For himself. Exactly. Why did God do that? Mm -hmm. So that word can get in you. Get in you. Absolutely. So that word can get in that king. Absolutely. God says for us to write the word on the tablets yes. of our heart. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That's powerful. So that, because when you start writing something, mm -hmm. it just gets, it, it gets in you. Bishop and I was talking about when we do our sermons. Yeah. You know, when we, when we type Type them up, you know. God is yep. downloading, downloading, stuff downloading. Yep. Yeah. And we're typing it out, and it's in our spirit. Yep. So yep. It, that's that's fascinating. That it is. Fascinating. It's fascinating. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, you know, when I was thinking about that while you were saying that, you know, David, the the mistake that he made when he became king of all of Israel mm -hmm. is he placed the Ark of the Covenant on a new car mm -hmm. and then when calamity broke out because of that then david blamed it on the levites mm -hmm. the priests said because you did not do it according to the prescribed order well king you had a copy 
But the Levites should have told him. Absolutely. They, they should have him. told him. Yep. They should have spoken tr truth to power. Absolutely. And told them, King, no disrespect. Yeah. But they're not supposed to carry that Absolutely. on. Absolutely. That's our job. Absolutely. And see, when people get out of line mm -hmm. and don't know the rules and yep. the regulations. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Calamity. 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 Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So let's go before the throne of God and let's pray. Amen. Let's, let's pray that, that the rebellion in this country stop against the authorities, the, the scientists. Yeah. You know, because... The scientists have been proven right. Yes, they have. They told yes, us they have. that if we don't get this stuff together in in the winter, fall and winter, mm -hmm. we haven't gone in the winter yet. I think mm -hmm. we go in winter tomorrow. Yep. They say that it was going to be chaos. Signs of both politics. Yeah. And if, right now, over 110,000 Americans are in the hospital with COVID. Lord have mercy. Some people don't have any more ICU rooms. Some, some hospitals don't have any more beds. Wow. Wow. Mm. Whoever would have thought mm. that this chaos would be in this country, but mm. it is so. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we lift, we thank you first of all. Thank that you, This Lord. is the day that you have made. Thank you, Jesus. God, we lift up people who are suffering yes. with this COVID-19 virus. Yes, we, Lord. Thank you for the Monero uh, vaccines, I yes. think I'm pronouncing it right. Yes. That they have Approved on yesterday. Yes. Moderna is going yes. out there, Father. Thank you, And Father. we thank you for that. God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And Father, I pray for people who have the coronavirus. Yes. I know we have a couple of people at our church that have few people. Yes. And Father, I lift them up to you right now, dear God. Yes. Although they have a mild case of it, they have it nevertheless. Yes, yes Lord. I pray for Ooh. Dana, Denise, Chris. Ooh. I pray that you will touch their bodies and yes. heal them, dear God, of yes. this virus. Yes, Lord. I thank you that it's not a bad case. Thank you, Father. And Father, I lift up people that have lost their loved ones, the broken heart. Yes. The broken hearted. Yes. Oh, God, I know that. Going through this holiday season so fresh. Yes. Some people lost nine members, five yeah. members, four members of their family. Yeah. Children have lost both of their parents. Yes, Lord. God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Yes. That you will look down upon America and the world. Yes. And have mercy and pity upon us. Dear yes, God. Lord Jesus. Because we, we don't know, God. We we admit yes. that we don't know, but you know. Yes, you do. And so, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father. That you are still able to heal. You are still able to deliver. Yes. yes. I pray for the suffering. What I have not, what I have failed to ask, don't fail to answer. Because I don't know nothing compared to you, God. You know everything. Yes, Lord. I thank you and I bless you. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to get ready and get right on into the word this morning. We have a lot that we want to share with us on today. And I know we're not going to be able to get all of it in, but we're going to get in what we can. And uh, in, a, in, a decent, in a decent time here. Uh, as I said, Brother DeAndre and the music department has music prepared, so we're going to put that on Facebook a little later on. But I want you to turn to the book of the Revelation, the fourth chapter. And we've been talking about the throne room of God. The throne room of God. We're looking at heaven, what heaven is like, what the spirit world is like, what, what's going on in the unseen world. Yes. That, that world that is even more real than the seen world. Last week, we did part four of this mini-series entitled The Throne Room of Heaven. And in that message, we saw how in this fourth chapter of the Revelation and the sixth through the eighth verses, we, those are the verses we've been reading the last couple of Sundays, John described the four angelic beings that are around the throne of God called the four living creatures. We also looked at the names of other angelic creatures beings in the heavenly realms and their ministries. Number one, angels. All right, in the Greek and Hebrew, uh, the basic meaning of both words is messenger. Depending on the context, may be used of both human or supernatural beings. Uh, you know, in the, the second and third chapter of Revelation, 
Jesus addressed his letter to the churches, uh, or he addressed them to the angels of the churches of Asia Minor, the seven churches of Asia Minor, the messengers, the pastors. Uh, so whenever an angel is addressed as a human in the Bible, is a messenger, uh, pastor, leader of a congregation or something like that. Number two, they're called ministers in the Bible, translated from the Greek and the Hebrew, which means servant. Angels are servants. As ministers of the gospel, that's what we are. We're servants of the Lord. But the supernatural beings, uh, the angels, they are servants of God as well. Number three, they're called the host. The host of heaven, which is God's heavenly army. God has a heavenly army. Number four, they're, they're called chariots, which are also a part of the heavenly army to accomplish God's purpose. Number five, they're called watchers. And watchers are supervisor and, and agents, supervisors and agents of God employed to control world governments. We also stated that these angels, these watchers, refer to our personal angel. Everybody has a personal angel. And, and I want to reemphasize what I said on last week, that when our loved ones pass on, they don't become our personal angels. No. They go to heaven. They're, you know, Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The Lord already has what he has assigned them to do, and it's not to become our personal angels. No, our we do not. Humans do not become angels when we get to heaven. Bishop, we, the Bible doesn't really say when we get to heaven. Uh, yeah. What we will be doing there. Yeah, well, we I gonna, mean, you gonna besides say, worship. Yeah, worship. We, yeah. When we get to the rest of this, okay. you're going to learn that. Okay. We're going to learn. God got we'll some see. things. Well, let me come see. This is why you got to read and study. I haven't studied that yet. <laughs> Amen. <That's laughs> a, see, this is what I'm fascinated about right now. I'm studying. And some of the things that, that we're going to be studying in 2021, if the law says the same, is really going to fascinate you to see, to see the other side. And, and it's all in the Bible. And, and to show you how God operates. Oh, my God. It's so fascinating to me. So fascinating. Um, we also began to look at, at names that reveal the nature of angels, such as, number one, sons of, of the mighty, Beni Elim, Beni Elim. And this describes the strength of angels. Number two, sons of God, Beni Elohim. That's with a capital E. Elohim, capital E. This class of angels, including Satan, refers to a class of mights and powers. It does not reflect the holy nature of angels, but in Job, they are a picture. They are uh, pictured as assembling before God, ministering to him and answering to him. Now today, we're going to go further into this study of the throne room of heaven, and we're going to see what heaven is like, that unseen world, and the names that reveal the nature of angels. We're going to get into it a little further. Revelation chapter 4, verse 6 through 8, once again says, Before the throne there was a sea of glass, like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second living creature was like a calf. The third living creature had a face like a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Now, in the upcoming weeks, the Lord says the same. We're going to finish this chapter, and we're going to go over to chapter number five, because there is a lot to unpack in chapters four and five. But for now, we're looking at the angelic beings. Um, we see four living creatures, but as we stated earlier, there are more angelic beings in the heavenlies. The, the, the next class of angels that we're going to look at here 
are called Elohim. Elohim, capital uh, E L O H I M. When you when you see that word Elohim in Hebrew, it's talking about God with a capital E. But when it's spelled with a small e, then that's talking about angels. And so that word, as I stated, it, sometimes it applies to angels, and it's used of both God and angels. But when you see it spelled with a little e in Hebrew, now this is just for preachers or people who like to study words. When you see it spelled with a small e, it's talking about angels. And Elohim, as it is a, the angels are Elohim, and as a family or class, they are sons of Elohim, capital E-L-O-H-I-M. This is the understanding, evidently, of the writer of Hebrews, uh, as well as the translation of the Septuagint, when he takes a little lower than Elohim as a little lower than angels. That's found in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 7, and Psalms 8 and 5. This term pictures angels along with God as a supernatural class of beings of great strength and higher than weak and mortal man. Moses described Jacob's experience at Bethel by saying that Elohim, little, little L-O-H-I-M, in the plural, were revealed unto him. Talking about angels were revealed unto him. Thus, he thus indicated that God and his angels, when envisioned together, may be called Elohim, capital E-L-O-H-I-M, supernatural beings. As the created servants of God, angels are reflective of God's great power and immortality. They are reflective of God's great power and immortality. Now, man is a little lower than the angels as we see in um, Hebrews 2 and Psalms 8. Angels have supernatural power. Mm -hmm. Man doesn't. We don't have no supernatural power. Mm -hmm. Angels have supernatural power. We, we, we don't match the strength of angels. Mm -hmm. One angel can wipe out a nation of, of, of army, of military. One angel can do that. They have supernatural power given to them by God. Yeah. Here's the next category. They're called holy ones in Psalms 89, verse 6 through 7. And we're going to read that here in a second. And this refers to God's angels. It is a translation of kadoshim, which means separated ones, those set apart to God. And the assembly of the saints are the holy ones and is best understood as referring to angels. The same expression is used in Job chapter 5, verse number 1, Job chapter 15, verse 15, Daniel chapter 8, verse 13, and Zechariah 14 and 5. And in each case, it probably refers to angels. Now remember, I know I'm saying these scriptures fast. You can go back and look at the rebroadcasts of this and write these scriptures down. And during your devotional time this week, go back and read them. Now, this term reflects their holy character and activities as those devoted to God. Now, let me read Psalms 82, and then I'm going to read it to you from the Amplified Translation. I'm going to read Psalms 82, verse 1. And then I'm going to read to you Psalms 89, verse 6 and 7. And then I'll read both of them to you from the Amplified Translation. Psalms 82 and verse number 1 says, God, Elohim, capital E, L-O-H-I-M, stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges, listen to this, among the gods, little E-L-O-H-I-M. You see that? He judges among the gods, the holy assembly of God in heaven. Now, when I get to that piece and I teach on that piece, it's going to bless your heart. Uh, the other day, I, I, the Lord showed me this. He opened this thing up to me and showed it to me. And I'm going to show it to you, and it's going to bless your 
It's going to bless your life. Let me just leave it like that. It's going to bless you. Amen. Psalms number 89. You, when, you, when we get to that piece, you're going to be blessed by it. Psalms number 89, verse 6 and 7. It says, For who in the heavens can be compared to the Lord or compared to Yahweh? Your faithfulness also in the assembly of the saints. For who in the heavens can be compared to the Lord or Yahweh? Uh, I, I read that. I read that. I'm sorry. Uh, who among the sons of the mighty, among the sons of the mighty, can be likened to the Lord, to Yahweh? Listen to this. God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be held in reverence by all those around him. Now, this is talking about in the heavenly assembly. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, this is Old Testament. So we're not talking about the saints in heaven. We're not talking about men mm -hmm. who died and went to heaven because theologically, when the Old Testament saints died, they went and they rested with their fathers. All right? Mm -hmm. They went in Abraham's bosom. They didn't go to heaven. They couldn't go to heaven until Jesus died and was resurrected. And then they went to heaven. Mm -hmm. So he's not talking about men, women, saints. No, no, no. Listen to it from the Amplified Translation. Psalms number 82, uh, verse number 1. God stands in the divine assembly. He judges among the gods, the divine beings. Angels are divine beings. Listen to Psalms 89, verse 6 and 7. For who in the heavens can be compared to the Lord who among the divine beings is like the Lord, a God greatly feared and reverently worshipped in the council of the holy angelic ones and awesome above all those who are around him. Now, I want you to get this picture in your, in your mind that in the heavens we have the Godhead, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Now, now think about this for a minute because um, when you talk about what is going on in the heavens and you look in the throne room of God, we see the four living creatures that are around the throne. Mm -hmm. Isaiah saw the seraphims that were uh, flying around the throne. Mm -hmm. Now we see all of these these angelic beings, these divine beings, they are in a council. They are, they make up the holy council of God. In Job chapter 1, Job chapter 2, there was a time when the sons of God, Bene Elohim, they presented themselves before God. The angels come before God and present themselves before God. I want you to see God sitting on his throne. I want you to see the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, the Word, sitting at, at the right hand of the Father. And all of this multitude, this great multitude of angelic beings around God, around his throne. They're waiting to serve. They're waiting to receive instruction. So that they can carry out God's commands, his, his instructions. Now, here's a, here's a next uh, name or class that angels are called. They're called stars. And stars is usually symbolically, uh, they're symbolic of angels, brother. And it denotes their heavenly nature and abode. God, God speaks of Job or speaks to Job about the wonders of creation and the time when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God, B'nai Elohim, shouted for joy. That's Job 38 and verse number 7. And it's rather natural that the stars and the angels be compared as heavenly creation that reflect the power and the wisdom of God. They are often mentioned in the same context such as in Psalms 148, verses 1 through 5. Write that down. 
uh, both angels and stars are called the host of heaven in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse number 19. Deuteronomy 17 and verse 3. 1 Kings chapter 22, verse number 19. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse number 6. Psalms 33 and verse number 6. Now listen to this piece right here because, in fact, astrology is connected to demon worship through this term. Jeremiah chapter 19, verse 13, and Acts chapter 7, verse 42. And particularly in 2 Kings chapter 23, verse number 5, verse 10 and verse 24 also. Divination and worship of the stars is condemned in the scriptures. That's found in Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse number 14 as connected with demonological elements. That's why we don't live by our zodiac signs. What's your sign? Oh, I'm a Capricorn. Uh, what, what was the float of that song? Uh, float on cancer. My name is Larry. No, no. We don't live based upon our zodiac sign. Yes, yes. And, and I, I want us to get that out of our heads because who you are in Christ don't have nothing to do with what month you were born in and your zodiac sign. Yes. Who you are in Christ has everything to do with God's plan and purpose for your life. And it don't have nothing to do with whether you're an Aries, Taurus, the Bull, Gemini, the Twin, none of that stuff. None of that. So get that out of your head. Glory to God. <laughs> so it's not strange then to, to note Satan is described in his rebellion and warfare against God as a wonder in heaven. A, a great red dragon and his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth over in Revelation 12, 3 and 4. This force of spirit beings is later called Satan and his angels in verse 9 of chapter 12 in the Revelation. Stars then speak symbolically of heavenly spirits created by God. Now let me throw this little piece in real quickly because in the last few weeks, of course, maybe a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how scientists, you know, they believe that there are 300 sextillion stars in the universe, you know, through the Hubble telescope and, you know, searching the universe, they, they believe that there are 300 sextillion stars out there in the universe. And uh, 300 sextillion is like a three with 26 zeros behind. That's, that's a lot of stars. When, when, you know, the Bible talks about uh, the angels being like the stars of the heaven is really talking about how they are innumerable. It's so many of them that it's hard to even count them, to even put a number on how many stars God created. Mm -hmm. And all of these stars or these angels that God created are for his purpose and for his service and to worship him. Now let's keep going because here's a piece that I want us to get. Because there are three angels in the Bible that are named, one of which we've already seen, all right? Three in the 66 canonized books that we go by. This right here, the Holy Bible. I'm not talking about the Apocrypha. I'm not talking about the Pseudo-Apocrypha. I'm talking about this right here, all right? Three angels. Number one, Lucifer. His name is, in Hebrew, is Hillel, which means the shining one. Day star or light bearer, the son of the morning. The, and he is the anointed cherub who later became Satan, the devil. And Lucifer is seen as the worship leader of God among the angelic hosts. And we've already talked about him. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about Lucifer. And because through pride and rebellion, he fell from his place in heaven. Uh, Luke, uh, I mean, Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 12 through 18, you can read that. And Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 17, read those verses and it'll talk to you about Lucifer and the anointed cherub. The second angelic being that is named in scripture is Gabriel. And his name means the mighty one of God or 
strength of God, the messenger angel. That's who Gabriel is. He is the messenger angel. Gabriel's name speaks of his great strength endowed by God. And he is self-described as, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Now think about that. You got the four living creatures. You have the seraphim flying around. You got the holy council of heavenly beings, angelic beings, you know, in, in the throne room of God all around. But then you have this mighty angel, Gabriel, yes, yes. who stands in the presence of God. Mm -hmm waiting on God to give him a message to deliver to his servants. Yes. Glory to God. See, there are special occasions where Gabriel is mentioned, and it seems that Gabriel is a prophetic angel and the messenger and interpreter of the prophetic word concerning the Christ of God. And he appeared to Daniel twice and to Zechariah, uh, the father of John the Baptist. Uh, and then to Mary, the virgin mother of Jesus Christ. And each of these visits involved messianic revelation. Gabriel stands in the presence of God and is seen in association with Michael, never with Lucifer. Now remember, when Daniel went on that fast, he fasted for 21 days. Now he could have only fasted for one day because God gave the answer that Daniel was seeking as he was praying and fasting. He gave it to Gabriel that same day mm -hmm. to bring back to Daniel. But the prince or the principality of Persia prevented Gabriel from getting that prophetic word or answer to Daniel. And it took 21 days for that answer to get to Daniel. And Gabriel had to call on the assistance of Michael to come and help him with the principality, a demonic spirit that was assigned to the nation of Persia. He had to call upon Michael, the warring angel, to come and help him to get the answer to Daniel. Mm -hmm. Isn't that powerful? Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes there are prayers that are answers to your prayers that are being held up because of demonic influence. Demons influence people. Somebody is holding up your money because some devil have told them, don't pay those folk. Don't give them that money. They don't need it. No, no. In the name of Jesus, you release that money to God's people. And Jesus, the answer to somebody's prayer is being held up because of demonic activity. It's not the person, it's the demon that influences the person. Remember Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of this dark age, the spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. Now you, you say, look, I just go and beat the person up and get my money from them. <laughs> no, no. No, you come against that spirit in the name of Jesus the Christ and God will release your miracle, your blessing to you. Glory to God. And it was Gabriel who went to Zacharias, who was the father of John the Baptist and announced to him that he would have a son and told him what the son's name was going to be. It was Gabriel who went to Mary and told Mary that she was going to conceive, but it wasn't going to be from Joseph. That the Holy One that would be within him would come, would be from God, the Holy Spirit of God. And so Gabriel is that messenger angel. He is a prophetic messenger angel. Now listen to me. Listen to me. When God has a prophetic word, now his his responsibility was from for the messianic prophecies mm -hmm. concerning Jesus. He is the Messiah. Mm -hmm. There are times when, and, and I'll get to this later on, you know, in our study of this, because this blew my mind when I was studying this this week. When the prophets 
the, the, the so-called prophets of God prophesy a thing and they get it wrong. And they say, God showed me this. Or, you know, and he showed it to me in a dream or God spoke to me, you know, in a dream. And, and I'm going to show you in the weeks coming up how sometimes they thought they heard from God and sometimes it was just wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. It was what they wanted to happen. How is it that so many of them can get it wrong? It's a, it's a story right in the Bible. I'm going to show you how they got it wrong. All of them, every one of them got it wrong. Mm. Except the one that God spoke to and showed in a vision mm. what was going to take place. Ooh, come on, Bishop. And you're going to see how God, God carries out and when he decrees a thing and when he declares a thing, he says in Isaiah 46, that, you know, he declares the end from the beginning. And I'll use a bird of prey or I'll raise up a man to ensure that what I have decreed and declared comes to pass. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you how God does that in the upcoming weeks that the Lord says the same. But let me move on because i got to finish up here. Here's the third named angel in the scripture, and that's Michael. Mm -hmm. And his name means who is like God. Not a statement, not a statement, but a question. We remember we read over in in Psalms number eighty nine, who is like the Lord, who is like Jehovah. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael's name is a question. Who is like God? Jehovah's Witnesses say that it's a statement. No, it's not a statement. It's a question. When you read that from the Hebrew, you see it's a question because no one is like God. They say that Michael the archangel is actually Jesus the Christ. No, he's not. No, he's not. Nothing can be further from the truth. Jesus is not a created angel. No. He creates. He created the angel. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you. Including Michael the archangel. Now watch this. Because Michael is the warrior angel. Michael is designated as the archangel and is classified as one of the chief princes. Michael is the special guardian of Israel. We've been talking about that. He is the one that God assigned to the nation of Israel to protect Israel, specifically during the tribulation period when the Antichrist comes against them. It's Michael who will stand up for his people. And it's Michael who came to the aid of Gabriel, as we said earlier, to assist him in dealing with the principality of Persia and to help deliver the answer to Daniel's prayer. It's Michael who contended with the devil in disputing about the body of Moses and did not dare bring a railing accusation against himself, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Now stop. Stop. Hold on. Michael is the warring angel. Couldn't he just rebuke the devil himself? Now, this is where we need to understand the pattern of heaven. There is protocol. There is order in heaven. And Michael does not do what he has not been authorized to do. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. So you better not go around doing things that you had been authorized. You better know what you've been authorized to do. Michael, the warring angel, could have, because he is a great and mighty angel, you would think he could have rebuked the devil, and that, was, that would have been it. Mm -hmm. But he said, the Lord rebuked thee. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Yes. And there is order. There is protocol in heaven. Mm -hmm. Remember Satan or Lucifer was one of the highest ranking and perhaps the highest ranking angel mm -hmm. in heaven before he was cast out. Now let's, let's keep going because um, Michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon's angels, that old servant, the uh, serpent brother, the devil and Satan. And Satan took one third of the stars or the angelic beings with him when he was cast out of heaven. That's how he formed his dominion of darkness. Mm -hmm. The principalities, the powers, the rulers of this dark age, mm -hmm. the spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. One third of the angelic beings 
rebelled and went with Lucifer. Isn't that something? Now remember, remember, just an estimation or guesstimation. Um, the astrologers, astronomers believe that there are 300 sextillion stars in the universe. Mm -hmm. And so um, the, the Bible calls the angels the stars. Now think if... if Each star represents an angel. I was just thinking about that. Isn't that powerful? Yes. yes, yes. And so one third of, of 300 sextillion, that's 100 sextillion, are demonic spirits that followed. That's if they are correct in their estimation because there may be even more now. <laughs> Because as the Hubble telescope or their instruments that they have out there in the universe <laughs> studying and counting all these stars, it may be 616 by now. They can't count them all. <laughs> Nobody can count them all. <laughs> Nobody can. Um, so, so many ex expositors believe that Michael is the archangel that comes with the Lord Jesus Christ at the rapture of the church. Uh, remember the Bible says... The Lord himself shall descend with the archangel's voice and the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Write these verses down. Daniel chapter 10, verse 13 and verse 20. And then Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 through 4. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. Jude, verse number 9. Only one chapter in Jude, verse number 9. And then Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9. Now, I'm going I'm to close it out with this. I have wanted to get to this other part, but I'm going to close it out with this because I only have a little under eight minutes left. But I want to I share this with us because some writers have suggested that and, and they have suggested this and I add that I don't find any biblical reference to this. But they believe that Lucifer, Gabriel, and Michael are all archangels. Uh, mind you, Michael is the only one called archangel in, mm -hmm. in the scriptures, mm -hmm. the 66 canonized book of scriptures. Now, I know, you know, um, uh, the, the Nicene Council and all took out a lot of books, you know, which are considered the... Uh, uh, Apocrypha and all that kind of stuff, pseudo apocrypha and all that, because they did not believe that it was the inspired word. So I just go with this. This is what I go with. But you know, and and they these people, these uh, writers teach that each of them had a third of the angels under them. Michael had a third, Lucifer had a third, and Gabriel had a third. All right. And so, and when Lucifer fell, he took his third with him. The other two thirds remained faithful to God and his word under their archangels, Michael and Gabriel. And it has also been suggested that these three archangels were the archangels of the Godhead that is representing the Godhead. Lucifer, uh, the archangel of the father, Michael, the archangel of the son, and Gabriel, the archangel of the Holy Spirit, their distinctive association and ministries certainly lend weight to this opinion. But as I stated, I don't find any biblical reference that supports this theory, this idea. Nevertheless, it sounds good. Sounds good. But if I can't, if I can't find any scripture to undergird it, then I can't go with that. I leave that out because, you know, a lot of times stuff sounds good mm -hmm. and it makes for good uh, movies in Hollywood and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. It makes for good uh, stories to write in books mm -hmm. to sell. But but if it's not biblical, we can't go with it. And and what I want to I, I want to do with this as I close is I want us when you watch movies, you know, that Hollywood produce. Be aware that some of it, some of it just sounds good and looks good because they have to, you know, they got to sell the movie. The, the ratings yeah, have to be yeah. up. Oh, yes. And the TV shows like um, Touched by an Angel, you know, t the shows have to, you know, they have to have their ratings. 
to stay on, on, on the air. Um, when I read about the angels, as I've studied about angels over the years, I've never seen where there are any female angels. None, none, none. I never read about any female angels. Mm. Never. So, you know, just, just stay with the Bible and you'll be all right. Amen. Just stay with the Bible and you'll be all right. Now, as I close, I want to, uh, give someone an opportunity today who may not know Jesus Christ as your personal savior. I want to give you an opportunity to be saved and to know that you're saved. The Bible says, for all have sinned, fall short of the glory of God. And there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 6 and 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 say that if you would confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9 say, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, and not by works, lest any man should boast. We're not saved because we're good people. We're not saved because we get it right all the time. We're not saved because of any of those reasons. We're saved because God loved us, sent Jesus to die for us. On the third day, he raised him from the dead. And he has seated him at his own right hand. And if you want to be saved, I want to give you an opportunity at this time. I'm going to ask you, if you would, bow your heads. And just repeat this prayer after me. And just mean it with all of your heart and God will save you today. Just repeat after me. Dear God in heaven, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins and I turn away from them. And I turn my life to you. I believe. That Jesus is your son. That he died for all of my sins. And you raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus. I ask that you. Would come into my life. And save me. Guide me. Lead me. And teach me. To live this saved life. Right now. I receive you by faith. As my savior. And my Lord. And I thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I give my life to you. Now fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with the overflowing measures. Give me the ability to speak in other tongues. And the power to bear witness of you. By faith, I receive the Holy Ghost. By faith, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. By faith, I have the tongues and I have the power. Thank you for filling me today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. Now, if you said that prayer and you meant it with all of your heart, I want you to know God saved you from your sins. And he filled you with his spirit and he's given you a brand new life in him, his very own life, eternal life. The next thing you should do is that if you're not already a member of a good Bible teaching church after the pandemic is over, after you get the vaccine and your church is open back up, I encourage you, find a good Bible teaching church, unite with that church, and become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then out of your obedience to him, be baptized. If you live in 77089 zip code or 77075-77034 or 77581 zip codes. You're close to New Covenant. After this pandemic is over, you get the vaccine, we open back up and begin to worship again. Come on and unite with New Covenant. We're a great Bible teaching church and we'd love to have you as a member of our church family. Amen? Amen. I want to encourage you all to like this Facebook page and share it with people. Share it all over the world if you can. We, we want this message to get out to people all over the world. And I want to encourage you to pray and ask God to give his angels charge over you, to give his angels charge
He said, remember, Pastor Cheryl and I will be at the church at 12, from 12 until 1 to receive the tithe and the offering. Pastor Cheryl, what you want to share with the people before we shut it down? Bishop, that was a good word. And Thank you, you so know, much. I always knew the story of Daniel mm -hmm. and how he had to call for help. Yes. How, no, that I always, I always knew the story of Dan, Daniel yeah. and how that angel yeah. over Persia. Yeah. Satan withstood him, mm -hmm. and that angel had to call for help. Yes, yes. But what I learned today mm -hmm. is that is that Gabriel and Michael have two different assignments. Absolutely, absolutely. And Gabe, Michael is the war angel. I knew that. Mm -hmm. I knew that he was an angel of war. Mm -hmm. But what I did not realize is that Gabriel is not a warrior. Right. He's a messenger. He's a messenger. Yes, sir. I knew he was a messenger. Mm -hmm. But what I did not understand until today mm -hmm. is that God gives them an assignment. Absolutely. And he equips them Absolutely. to do their assignment. Absolutely. And when the assignment becomes too much for them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they go get an angel who's equipped Absolutely. to do the job. Absolutely. But see, remember, the pattern in heaven... Mm -hmm. It, it's a pattern for us for what we are to do on the yes. earth. Now watch this. God has structure and order. Absolutely. Yes. Moses was not a warrior. Mm -hmm. Guess who was? Joshua. Joshua was yes. the warrior. Yes. <laughs> Glory to God. Yes. When when Moses and and Israel were fighting against the Amalekites, Moses went on the top of the hill mm -hmm. and he held his hands up. And as long as his hands were in the air, Israel prevailed. Mm -hmm. But when his hands got tired, and he lowered his hands, uh, the Amalekites prevailed. Now, it was Joshua leading the army of mm -hmm. Israel. It wasn't Moses down there. It was Joshua. Yes, yes. Joshua had his assignment. Moses had his assignment. Mm -hmm. But when his arms got tight, mm -hmm. Aaron and her came and raised Moses' mm -hmm. hands in the air. And Joshua and the army of Israel began to prevail yes, again. Yes. And heaven is a pattern yes. of what it's supposed to be like on earth. Mm -hmm. Thy kingdom come, mm -hmm. thy will be done. But Pastor Sarah, let me share this with you because this is something that's powerful too. When you're talking about the book of Daniel, you remember when Daniel, uh, his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refused to bow down mm -hmm. to Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. And Nebuchadnezzar threw them in the fiery furnace mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he came back and he saw that now I thought I told y'all to throw three men in yeah, there. Yeah, but I see a fourth man. I see a fourth man. And the fourth man looks like <laughs> the son of God. <laughs> Bene Elohim. They look like this fourth man looks like mm. the son. A pagan a pagan king. Yes. God gave him that revelation. <laughs> Oh, we're going to close this out, y'all. Oh, we're going all day. This is going to be so Woo. good. This is oh, going to be so good. Y'all oh, stay on this roller coaster with us. Stay with us on this. This is good, y'all. We'll see y'all at the church at 12, from 12 until 1. Uh, we're going to start Sunday school here at 1030. Sister Deidre will put on the screen the Zoom link for the classes for adults, for the Total Money Maker with Dave Ramsey and the youth and children's classes also will be on there. Thank you, Sister Deidre. Thank you, Sister Angelina. Thank you, Brother Danny, for helping us with Sunday school. Thank you, parents, for getting the kids connected, keeping them connected. Y'all pray for Dana and Denise. And yes, Chris. yes. Um, Keep them in your prayers. Yeah, all three of them have COVID, but thank God they have a mild case of it. Yeah, mild case. So Amen. Let's lift them up in prayer. Absolutely. Amen. Okay, love you guys. Love you all. See you all in a little bit. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.